Hello everyone, my name is Beto Lopez and this is Stacy Chang. We're here live at South by Southwest uh, at the introduction of the Design Institute for Health at the Dell Medical School in collaboration with the College of Fine Arts. Stacy. Hey, good to have you here. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming. So Managing Director, Executive Director. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so do you, what, hey, am I asking the question? I think you're asking okay, the question. Okay, let me ask the first question. <laughs> um, so Stacy, design in healthcare. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> Drawn from the perfect comedic uh, in, in intro. So, uh, so design in healthcare, right? I mean, healthcare is traditionally an analytic, data-driven, evidence-based approach to solving human health. And the challenge is a lot of the problems are not easily definable or yeah. easily analyzed. And so, uh, you know, design, you know, we, we sort of think of it as an aesthetic discipline. It really isn't. It, underpinning all of that is a, is a creative approach to solving really intractable problems. And it, it really has as its basis a focus on uh, human centeredness, on uh, looking at complex and sort of inscrutable and hard to find problems. And that's what design is really good at doing. So, so this is a pretty unique opportunity to take what is a, a very creative approach to solving problems and apply it in a place that generally doesn't get a lot of that kind of attention. Yeah. So uh, Clay Johnson wrote this uh, quick piece on the top 10 things st stolen from David Letterman. Yeah, right. Uh, that point to what's wrong with healthcare. Yeah. Uh, what about those things are interesting for us at the, Del at the Design Institute? So well, for example, the gown, the gown, waiting times. Patient gown, issue number one issue on his top one. 10 list. Yeah. Right, I actually, so I'll tell you a little story. I was uh, sharing that list with my wife who happens to be a physician and, uh, and she looked at me quizzically and she said, so what's wrong with the patient gown? She's like, you know, from my vantage point, it, I need access to the patient. It works perfectly. I can strip them down when I need them. I can cover them <laughs> up when I don't. And I said, well, that's, that's a classic uh, response from someone who's uh, embedded in the system and is adapted to the consequences and the circumstances within it. I said, but if you think about it from a patient standpoint, it's entirely a miserable experience, right? I said, when you uh, were pregnant in the hospital with our three kids, how much did you love the patient gown? She said, not at all, right? And I said, that's exactly the point. So, I mean, I think anything that uh, we have to offer in the healthcare system can be designed, and in fact, many times they are, they're just poorly designed, right? And so uh, it's an opportunity to really begin to think about uh, not what the system can improve from where it is now, but really, to steal a line from you, uh, <laughs> what experiences we, we want to have and start right. from there as opposed to improving the ones that we have now. It reminds me of something that Bill Margridge told us very early on, that everything that you see around you is designed. Yeah. Everything, whether you like it or not, has had a, a choice made. Yeah. Sometimes those choices just aren't very thoughtfully made. And in healthcare, we've made the choice not to design anything well. <laughs> <laughs> so we have an opportunity to do that now, which is, which is awesome. All right, so, uh, so You're gonna my, my right. turn. Might you go for it. My right. turn. So, uh, so, so, you know, we've had the opportunity to collaborate over the course of years uh, working at IDEO. Yeah. Uh, and because I'm the healthcare nerd, so it's on healthcare projects. But, you know, I think uniquely, healthcare is a large, hairy, nasty system. Complex, right? And Complex. that's sort of your bailiwick. So, yeah. so, wh so why this? Why this? Well, uh, we started out designing products for individuals, right? And then as we got better at that, they gave us harder problems. And so we started designing services for the interaction people have uh, throughout the, the course of uh, getting something or, or performing something. And then after that, we started getting asked even harder problems, which is now we're designing for, for the creation and, des and designing products and services that have to work with a network of people, yeah. which, which are represented by groups and individuals, yeah. all with ostensibly a common goal. Right. But when you start to unpack that, they really don't always have a shared goal, or at least their motivations and needs aren't always aligned. And so the, the more we get harder problems, right, the more you see them across industries, not just in health, right? Yeah. We've seen it in all different places, in, uh, in transportation, for example, in food. Um, those problems begin to tell you how much design is needed to yeah. really unpack the needs that people really have. Yeah. And to steal a quote from you, like the idea that it's not just about choosing what you can buy that's out there as a solution, but wanting to create something yeah. that solves a need, right? Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing that we've learned is to actually start with the needs people have yeah. and to then create what we can with that information. Yeah, so, so to follow on that, so yeah. we had an interesting conversation a couple days ago where someone sort of characterized the opportunity in Austin as a blank slate. And, uh, and you know, I think it's probably oversimplified yeah. because you know, a blank slate suggests there's nobody there. There's a lot of people in healthcare, of, you know, here in Austin and, and, glo and globally, right? So, so tell me a little bit about, about your thoughts of, you know, we got a lot of entrenched stakeholders here who have a vested interest in seeing a more effective healthcare system. How does that play with this notion of a new design institute that's working here on the edge of the medical school? 
I, I think it's, it's the best place to convene them, right? We, our interest is to represent the needs of the people in Austin and to help uh, surface those needs across all the different stakeholders yeah. who, are, who can come to the table and create these new experiences. Uh, and that's going to mean us reaching out to people uh, in tech, in business, in the community, uh, so that we can fully understand the breadth of work that needs to be done, yeah. but that we, we also make sure that no one person owns this, right? The solutions that we want to create are going to be solutions that are going to be benefited by the, this, the community in Austin. Yeah. And, uh, and we got to come together to raise the net value of that system yeah. uh, and, not, and not assume that there's just one person that's going to uh, maximize their own gain here, yeah. right? And that's really the design ethos of the Design Institute, to really have a place where design can consistently act on the behalf of people in Austin continuously throughout the different things that we embark on. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me ask this question. We're sitting on the edge of something here called the startup cluster. And, uh, and, uh, and so there's a whole slew of entrepreneurs here who That's right. you know, ostensibly have some interest in moving the healthcare system forward. So, yeah. so tell me, what, what are your thoughts with how we engage with the cluster like this? We need to understand, first and foremost, the problems that they're solving with the tools that they're bringing online. Yeah. Right? I think the first thing that we have to do is really have an honest conversation about the pain or need yeah. that they are solving and then find a way, if that pain and need exists for the Austin community, to get them to try and test their startup. Right? The thing that we want to make sure is that no company gets too big to fail. Right. And we have to do that by constantly getting people to engage with new uh, services. Obviously, there's a lot of digital uh, services out there, but it's going to include hardware, it's going to include biotech. And we want people to, as soon as possible, begin to understand how their solutions, how their companies can solve some of these problems. And if they're not solving real pains, yep. we have to readdress that constantly. Yeah, so what? So I think a me message loud and clear out of there is, you know, a lot of these guys are, are focusing on technology as their primary underpinning and their differentiator. I, what I think I'm hearing you say is, you know, that's great and it's an enabler, but it's not where you begin. You got to start with understanding uh, who you're serving and what their needs Absolutely. are. Absolutely, right? And, and we've been doing that for uh, quite a while at, at IDEO, and I think that for us, it seems like old hat, right? But I think that we have to take a step back and realize, you know, this isn't Silicon Valley. This is uniquely Austin. And, uh, and we have to recognize that the ecosystem that, that is cr being created here is something that we can help influence. Yeah. And so back to you, um, this isn't, you know, Silicon Valley. It's not New York City. It, it, it's Austin, Texas. So as we move forward, what are the things that you're excited about in, in Austin to really um, think about this in a different way? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple important points. First of all, uh, it's not Silicon Valley, and there's actually some benefit to that, right? Because Silicon Valley tends to be a place that is wowed by technological virtuosity. Because we can, we do, yeah. right? Which is not actually a reason for being, right? And you see a lot of interesting technologies come, fall, come and rise and fall by the wayside because they haven't done what you suggested. The other thing is you need more than just technological virtuosity to succeed, right? You actually need an ecosystem of, of engaged and invested stakeholders. And, and I think we've got that here. I think there's some unique circumstances in Austin. The fact that there's a central healthcare district which is funded locally and acts locally is actually really unique because you, you don't have some huge state entity trying to average out needs and the ways to serve them across a large population. You have one that's designing for the lo local needs. And then, and then I think most importantly, you've got a, uh, and a community that, that by virtue of having funded this whole shebang, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, not only are they engaged, they're demanding a response, right? Dem demanding a return on that investment at the very least, but, but more importantly, if you take the less sort of uh, a severe view of it, is they're engaged. They want to know what's going on, right? It's, it's, it's amazing the kind of engagement you hear just you know, South by Southwest, in the community, in conversations about how much what the Dell Medical School is doing, how much it matters to the local, uh, the local economy and the local uh, uh, population. And so something that I take away from that that we've been talking a lot is the invitation to anybody who wants to roll up their sleeves and work with yeah. us to co-design with us. Yeah. Right? That part of this is to really recognize that this is an effort that no one person can solve. No yeah. one stakeholder, no one department at the university yeah. can solve this by themselves. Yeah. And so there's an open invitation that we have at the Design Institute to really invite those people willing and wanting to change their experience with the health ecosystem here yeah. uh, and to go co-design with us. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll reinforce that point because I think it's an important one. You know, there's an incredible amount of talent uh, in, the, in, in the Austin area. There's an incredible amount of research and capability coming out of the university and the startups in the space. You know, uh, our role is to facilitate and enable through a design approach, right? And you know, 
I've said before, you know, the, the future of healthcare is really in certain, no single entity is going to design it by themselves. It's going to require an ecosystem that's aligned towards, um, you know, what we're talking about is a value-based system. So, so we'll have to do it together. Absolutely.